Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillen. I'm an itinerant evangelist that believes in exposition preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy to have you on the broadcast today. I hope you'll have a Bible handy, no book, something to write with. You'll find our text today in Ruth chapter number three. We have now for several broadcasts been preaching a series through the book of Ruth. We've been using as our theme maybe the thought of uh, sitting around in a circle and maybe there's some in the circle that doesn't know the others and maybe someone would turn to one and say, well, what's your story? If that was to happen to Ruth, I can't help but believe that maybe Ruth would say, all of grace is my story. We've looked at it from several angles. We noticed in chapter number one the reasons for grace. We also concluded at the end of chapter number one the revelation of grace. And on our last broadcast, we ended up in chapter number two, where Ruth is sitting there at the table with Boaz, and he reaches parched corn and hand feeds her, and uh, Dunks it not in gravy, but in the grace of God. We brought some thoughts there on the reach of grace. Any movement of God towards man is a reach of grace. Now today, I want to begin to look in chapter number three, the next several broadcasts, and bring some thoughts on the repose in grace. I was thinking again today about the good grace of God. God can be a God of judgment and wrath. But one of his major characteristics is that he is a gracious God. Being gracious is the opposite of merit. Most of us work on a merit system. If you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. A lot of marriages are based upon a merit system. You do this for me, and I'll do that for you. We have even created a fictitious character that I'm not totally against. I enjoy playing the little fictitious character. We have created him in December. He is known by the name of Santa Claus. And he works on a merit system. Uh, he's got a list. He's checking it once or twice to see who is naughty or not. I can assure you today that God does not work upon a merit system. He does not have a list. He's checking it once or twice to see who's been naughty or not. But he is a gracious God. I have known him to be extremely gracious to me, even when I have been bad. Oh, I'm talking about all of grace is my story. In chapter number three, we begin to look at the repose of grace. I feel like that little word repose meets the text so clearly. Uh, the little word means trans. Tranquility, uh, calmness, or peace of mind, uh, that uh, trust or faith in another, that causes one to lie down in rest in the most unbelievable of circumstances. Our Lord said on one occasion, Come unto me. All ye that are weary and heavy laden, he said, and I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. No matter what our circumstances are today, God desires to be gracious unto us and calls us to repose or rest in those circumstances. 
As we begin to unpack the text today in Ruth chapter 3 and verse number 1, I would draw our teaching today first of all to the repose of obedience. The Bible says in verse number 1, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? that it may be well with thee. I see this here, a need for grace, uh, that uh, it causes one to seek for rest. Uh, the little word seek here means to strive after or to pant after. They are can, uh, panting after rest, Comfort from another. Uh, the little word well means to be happy, satisfied, or content in the most horrendous circumstances. Why is this need, does Naomi uh, think there is a need for rest? I see in verse number two, Thou is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maiden thou wast. Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. I tell you, if there's ever been a need of the child of God having a repose of rest, it'll be in a time of winnowing. The Bible tells us that our Lord told Peter one time that he said, Peter, he said, Satan has desired to sift you. He did not say he had uh, tried to stop the devil. He said, no. He said, and Peter, he says, I am praying for you that your faith fail not, that you wouldn't lose heart in the midst of the sifting. This little word winnoweth here is very clear kin to this little word sift. When they would winnow the barley, they would take it and put it in a sheet and they would throw it up in the night breezes and uh, the breezes would blow through the wheat and it would blow away the chaff or the dross, or the, the fake wheat and only the real thing would fall down into the sheet. Our Lord is... Uh, uh, throwing us up in the winds of adversity. The winds of adversity is uh, blowing uh, the dross from our lives. These are horrendous days, but he desires to be gracious to us and give us the repose of rest. But it would involve uh, a repose of obedience. I notice for Ruth there is the dress of obedience. Naomi said, wash thyself, therefore. Washing speaks of sanctification. Uh, the Bible talks about Paul speaking. He said, the washing of the water by the word of God. And James talks about the water uh, is, uh, he said, the word of God is like a mirror, like the laver. Uh, when the Old Testament priest would go in, he would wash himself. That labor was like a mirror. The Word of God shows us what we are like. I tell you, in order to repose in the time of adversity, there must be the dress of obedience. There must be a strong relationship with the Word of God. She also told her to anoint thee. That anointment is for empowerment. The Old Testament priest had oil poured upon his head. It was a picture of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Elijah had uh, the mantle on him, the double portion of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That little word filled has the idea of a cylinder, not with a bottom in it. You fill it up and it overflows. Oh, no. But the bottom end has been taken out. Uh, oh, God will kick the end out of us uh, through adversity, empty us of ourselves, 
and then immerse us in the Holy Ghost and he'll flow freely through us. Oh, there must be the dress of obedience. There must be the washing, sanctification, the anointing of empowerment. Then he all, she also tells her in verse 3, and put thy raiment upon thee. That raiment speaks of the impartation of the righteousness of Christ. In a time of adversity, we cannot come in our own stead, in our own person, but we must come in the person of Christ. We, we must come in our imparted righteousness. We must live not out of our practice, but we must live out of our position. See, our position today is this. I don't know if you can get this off of me. All of grace is our story. And I tell you, in a time of adversity, all of grace being our theme will be greater and grander than we've ever known because we know for one day we shall see him as he is. And the last day of adversity will end. I also see there is the direction of obedience. She says in verse number four, and it shall be when he lieth down that thy shall mark the place where he shall lie. Now, this little word mark the place needs has the idea of being familiar with where he is at. Oh, I tell you, you ought to be familiar with where God is moving and working. You ought to be familiar with the places that you can find God. And she tells her, she said, mark that place and go and uncover his feet and lay thee down. Lay at his feet is a picture of humility and contrition. We're talking about the direction of obedience. We're talking about being able to rest in the time of great adversity. God resisteth the proud, but what? Giveth grace to the humble. O oh, Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, she's only mentioned three times in the scripture, and every time she's mentioned at being at his feet. Feet. Not only do I see the dress of obedience and the direction of the obedience, but I see the doings of obedience. The Bible says in verse number six, and she went down unto the floor. That little word went down has the idea of getting abundantly low. The Bible says in verse number six, and she did according to all that her mother-in-law said. She gets down low in obedience to authority. Her mother-in-law is her authority now. Grace will always cause humility and obedience. If there is pride and, and arrogancy, the obedience of grace has not been extended, or if it has been extended, it has been rejected. There will be a tranquility of the person in mind uh, when one lies down in obedience to God. Oh, I'm telling you, grace causes love and perfect love cast about all fear. The old Shudamite woman told Gehazi when he asked her, her son had died. He said, how is it with your husband? She said, it's well. He said, how is it with you? She said, it's well. He said, how is it with the boy? The boy's graveyard dead at the house. But she said, he's all right. He's well, too. See, the tranquility uh, and uh, of rest comes in that repose of obedience. Well, it's been a joy to have you here on the broadcast again today. Reminds you of our study website, TomGillum.com. Weekly Bible studies. There are several hundred archive daily devotions. An audio section, a hook up to these video uh, uh, broadcasts, TomGillum.com. Uh, if I can ever be of a help to you, a prayer request, if you're interested in a meeting, I'm an itinerant evangelist. You can email me at tbgillum at aol.com. Thanks for listening to the broadcast today.